Okay, everybody. And if you're not muted, please can I ask you just to mute yourself as well during, during the meditations and the, and the talk. All right. So this is a photograph of Eric Baboon, who one of the Baboon elders who I knew when I was working very closely with the Baboons um, from about 2005 to about 2010, 2012. And he was one of the oldest wild baboons known. And he amazingly passed away naturally next to someone's swimming pool. And um, when he was about 23 years old, so that was quite a, and he'd seen quite a lot of changes in his habitat in those times. So let us either close our eyes or just rest them softly on those wise or the wise eye of Eric Baboon. Take a deep breath in and feel your body relax completely. Feel your feet firmly on the ground. And as you breathe in, Take your focus to your heart space. And in that heart space, just feel the beautiful love that you have for all beings of nature. And at this very moment in time, Be aware of any anxieties or worries that you may be carrying in your heart and let the love of Mother Nature clean your heart out. You can visualize it as a beautiful rose golden light that you breathe into the heart space that pours into your heart, cleaning and clearing at this moment so that your heart is pure and not contaminated with any human worries and all you are feeling is that pure natural love unconditional love for all mother nature's children and now you can send that love out and feel the unconditional love connecting you and mother nature feel it ex expand from your heart space, throughout your body, and then away from your body, expanding outwards and outwards. There's no limit to its reach. Feel the connection that that love gives you to all beings of nature, to the earth, to the minerals, the rocks, the water, the plants, the trees, the insects, the birds, the animals. All that nature energy. And while you're here in that heart space, feel the connection that you have with all the people that are listening and on this call at this time, gathering their hearts together, whether it's now in this live session or watching the recording. Time is circular. So all the intentions that we put out today and in the future will be as effective. And we set our intention to be able to listen clearly to what our baboon brothers and sisters are telling us today. Keep that feel and that, that feeling and that field of unconditional love around you as you start becoming aware of your body, 
your feet firmly on the ground and come back to the meeting where you look, gaze upon dear Eric once more. Okay, everyone. So I hope that has put you all on the same wavelength. Now I'm going to speak a little bit about the history of baboons in our time on the planet as humans. And it starts at the very beginning with the indigenous people, the first nations people, the first people of the world, and those we know as the Bushmen of Africa. And you'll see in this drawing um, on the corner of the screen, the depiction of Bushman rock art and so many um, thousands, hundreds of thousands of years old. And during, in African tradition, they were considered the shamans of the animal kingdom. And one of the stories that I've heard, um, one of the belief systems is I've, is I've heard that the people in the villages always wanted the baboons to move through the village, to come and visit and then move on because one of their powers as sh shamans was to take away any negative energy. So any curses or witchcraft or anything that um, would harm the people would be taken away from these shamans of the animal world. And interestingly enough, they weren't the, the people didn't want them to stay in the villages. They needed to go out, go into nature and transform or transmute that negative energy so that um, it couldn't harm anyone. And nature is the way to transform negative energy, that unconditional love of mother nature. And then of course, there is the Egyptian um, gods, and one of the very oldest god of the Egyptians is Babi, who was the god of the underworld. And he was de de depicted as a bull of the baboons, the bull of the baboons. So a very fierce character who was the god of the underworld. And he weighed up people's souls and he was the judge of righteousness. And basically he would decide whether you deserved a place in heaven with the gods, next to the gods, or in the dark. And then Babi evolved to Soth, who was the god of wisdom. And he was the scribe. He's depicted as so many different, um, were in so many different ways, guiding humans, um, in law, in literature, and an incredibly intelligent being. And he is also depicted as a baboon and sometimes as an ibis. So they seem to move between them, but very, very sacred animals. The Egyptians would often keep baboons as pets. Um, and even um, the baboons would help the humans to catch criminals. Um, so there's so many stories of how the baboons were sacred beings and, you know, so many of the animals were sacred and deemed to be sacred in the old nations. Of course, this has changed in modern day. My feeling about baboons has always been that they are the link between us humans and the other animals the four-legged animals on the planet. Baboons share 96% of our DNA. Well, I know chimpanzees share, I think, 98 or 99% of our DNA. And if we look at lions, who are my sort of totem animals, so to speak, and the animals that I was always drawn to work with, they share approximately 85% of the human DNA. And I've always wondered why I was working with baboons when my first love has always been lions. And of course, as you know, I do work with the lions and the white lions. And this picture is one of, of Zyra. 
um, the, one of the beautiful lionesses at the project. And I came when I asked, what is, what is the link between the baboons and the lions? That was the answer that I got, that they are the link actually between the humans and the lions and all other animals. So if we start learning from the baboons, we can learn how to be back in tune with nature because they are so like us. It's incredible when you get to know them. While I was putting this slideshow together, I came across some incredible stories about lions and baboons. And um, the one you see this lioness um, holding a baby baboon, and this was happened in 2014 in Botswana, where um, a lioness actually had, was hunting, because lions do hunt baboons, and had killed a, a mother. And the mother was carrying this little baby. And everyone, apparently it was observed by people on safari, and of course with the, the photographs. But everyone expected the, the baby to just be mauled to death. And, but of course, something incredible happened. The lioness started nurturing this baby and the baby was even trying to suckle from her. It actually ended very well where some male lions came and um, she got very aggressive towards the lions. And there was a big male baboon watching this whole scene. And with the distraction, with the fight between the female and the males, he swooped in and scooped up the um, baboon, the baby baboon, and the baboon actually survived. When, what happens in baboon families is if the mother is killed, there's always a foster mother who looks after the baby. So that was fascinating to me. And then this other picture happened actually in 2020 in February um, in the Kruger National Park where um, a baboon was seen with a baby lion cub and was grooming the baby, um, not wanting to harm it at all, and which is very, also very unusual behavior. Poor baboons, if they find cubs, they normally kill them. So amazing examples of how nature is sympathetic towards each other. And, you know, a lesson that we can learn from that as well. But back to the baboons that we are talking about here, those were wild baboons that have a lot of space to roam, even though it's tourist spaces, but they do have space and there's some kind of balance in the ecosystem. But for the baboons that live on the urban edge, what is happening to them now? So you see, they come into the village for all the waste that we leave, all the easy food when we don't take care of our waste. We are so careless with our consumer attitude. They have amazingly easy access to buildings. You can see here's the whole troop of um, a particular group of baboons climbing up um, a multi-story flat. And these were flats that were built right on the edge of the mountain, um, quite a poverty stricken area. And the baboons would always break in, um, well, get in, as you see, the windows are open, looking for the food. Um, and nothing was ever done about the management, the waste management, um, the education. Baboon Matters um, did quite a lot of work when they were managing the baboons. However, the same old problems existed and nothing was ever done about it. But the, even though there were no consequences to the humans, what happened to the baboon? So this is William. He was the first baboon in the Cape Peninsula to be killed uh, according to the raiding baboon protocols that was put forward by the city of Cape Town. And it was devastating for me. Um, we had kept William safe for two years when the murmurings had started that they wanted to kill him. And through animal communication and the Baboon Monitor Project at the time, which Baboon Matters was um, managing and running, Denny at the time, well, and still, 
um, refuses to partake in lethal management and unfortunately lost the contract. Since William's death, more than 80 baboons have been killed on the peninsula. Now, if you think about at the time when I was working with these closely with these baboons, there were only about 250 baboons. The population was only 250 baboons. So 80 of them have been killed legally. And that's what we know of, not the others that, that have been killed nefariously. There have been quite a few stories that have made the news over the last couple of years. Um, if some of you who follow me there, you might remember the story of Angelina and the Scarborough baboon troop. Uh, there were four females left um, as from a troop of about 28 that frequented a place called Misty Cliffs and Scarborough, which is um, this picture was taken on the, the rocks just above the village. And these baboons were always in the village, always taking easy food. They felt safe in the village and there were no males left to protect them. And it was a travesty. This picture shows one young male who joined up with them. Very soon after that, they were taken into captivity. We don't know what happened to the male. He was removed. But when I communicated with Angelina about what she wanted to happen, would she be okay with being taken away from her home and her life would be saved, but she would be in captivity and in a place far away from this, her, her birthplace? And the message that I got and some other very well-known animal communicators got at the same time was, we will take the risk. We don't want to leave. It would be almost a fate worse than death. And I asked, what is so important? Why, why do you need to stay here? And she showed me a vision of a darkness coming across the land. Now, this was at the end of 2019, just before the pandemic. And other wild animals that I had communicated with at the same time showed me the same darkness creeping across the land. And Angelina told me that if the baboons are gone from the land, the humans will really struggle with this darkness, that they assist in removing it and transforming it and holding it back. And of course, the powers that be, they didn't want to kill the Angelina, which absolutely understandable because the outcry was immense. But from being a free roaming baboon with her babies, you can see here she fostered another um, baby, orphan baby, to being in captivity for life, basically. There may be a chance that she'll be free, but she's not in her birthplace and she is far, far away from here in a landlocked space. Then there's Kataza, famous Kataza. If, if you follow my work and Baboon Matters work, you will know the story. Kataza was forcibly taken, um, relocated from his home troop because he was um, thought to be wanting to form a splinter troop which is more difficult to manage. He was taken to a place um, not too far away, um, but a very busy place in the forest. He wasn't used to being in the pine trees. He wasn't used to being with a bigger troop with big other males, other five big other males. And he always was trying to get back, but he was never allowed to get back. And the picture on the left is Jenny um, and other sort of angels, as they called them, um, helping him to stay, to slow this, helping the cars to slow down so that he would be safe as he was trying to make his way um, home and to get some other food as well. Eventually, with all the protests and letters and advocacy that Baboon Matters and the community um, created, 
Ataza was brought back home to Komiki. And here's an amazing picture of him with a crow on the rock on the top of his beloved mountain. Unfortunately, even then, he wasn't allowed again to go back to his troop because it was to, he'd been away for quite a few months. Um, his brother had taken over the troop and the girls that wanted to go back to him were not allowed. Again, he wasn't allowed to form a, a, a splinter troop. So he didn't settle down. No matter how much we tried to communicate with him that he needed to join the troop, he had his own mission. He ended up in captivity as well. And perhaps he'll be doing a lot of educating for the people. There is, an, there is a reason behind this, but really my point is that for baboons on the urban edge, and specifically in places where the baboons are fiercely managed um, by lethal management methods and by aggressive management methods, the only two options are for them to be killed or for them to get taken into captivity. Philemon, as you see on the screen now, was the latest baboon to be killed and um, there has been an outcry about it. So what do we do? I want to share, before we go into that, I want to share and want to introduce you to a baboon that we now call Tony, who um, lives where I am sitting right now and surrounded by this beautiful forest of his homeland. And I first met Tony in this particular picture on the left. It's a bit fuzzy because it was taken when I was in the car and it was raining. Uh, people have been talking about um, removing him and removing basically means killing him. And I went to meet up with um, a researcher who is resident here as well. And um, she said, come at 10 o'clock because that's when, and hopefully you'll meet, um, they called him Scarface because he has quite a big um, scar on his bottom lip. And I said, okay, and I connected in with him. I hadn't met him before, but I said to him, I'd love to meet you. And I'm going to be at um, this particular place around 10 o'clock. So if you can be there, it would be wonderful. This picture was taken at the very top of my driveway. Um, so he actually met me before I arrived at 10 o'clock at about quarter to 10. Um, he walked in front of my car and, and sat on the fence next to me. And I connected with him then. My next meeting with him, and those of you who watched the um, Wild Wisdoms webinar last week would have seen this. He had just come into our kitchen and taken a bag of nachos. He dropped a few and this was him coming to fetch them. So that little shout at the end was his family calling him back and him returning very quickly. He looked a bit anxious because Simon, my husband, was standing recording um, his actions. So here's a picture of the baboon that we I started calling Braveheart. And then when we did a, um, a small group of us came together and did a meditation with him for him and his family about a week ago and one of the people said he doesn't mind being called Tony either and I've started calling him Tony now because it also takes away the warrior energy and the kind of scary energy he's just Tony and um, so this is a photograph a kind of a close-up photograph of him I didn't have such pristine photos and um, because he doesn't hang around for professional photographers to to um 
take his photo. So what I'd like us to do now, I'm going to guide you in to a meditation where we can communicate with him. And you can find out from him what he would like from us at this time. Just a little bit of history, recent history. About a week ago, Tony and his family frequented this particular property where I am, where there's four dwellings. And he was determined to break in, literally break windows and, um, you know, literally open, break window frames, break the glass to get in, to get to the food. That was the one place was on display, um, which was very silly for the people um, who had locked up their, their windows with, the, with the, a beautiful spread of fruit and vegetables. Um, out in the open. But the other house, is, there was no food on display. The person who lives on that property um, is very conscious of the baboon. She absolutely loves them. And he was determined. He kept on breaking and breaking things. Um, and it was 10 days solid. Every day we had a visit from Tony and his family. And he would be the one breaking into the houses. And when I spoke to Jenny, I said, I don't know what's going on. This is very unusual behavior. He's, he's, he's angry. And um, fortunately, he didn't come to our house. And I think it's just because I'm so used to baboons and was so conscious and aware of them. And Jenny said, it's not just there. It's chaos everywhere, every place. She's getting calls from all over the world. Uh, not all over the world, all over South Africa, that the baboons that live on the urban edge are making their voices heard. They are getting angry. They are breaking in. They are taking the food. They are causing havoc. Um, and of course, with people who, who don't like the baboons, that is the worst thing they can do because the authorities are going to, like in the past, want to kill them. So explaining this to Tony didn't stop him. And I've been communicating with him for the last two weeks. And I've got a fairly good idea about what, what he wants. But as a collective, I'd like us now to tune into him. If you've got a piece of paper and a pen handy, that would be great just to, to keep it next to you while we do this meditation. If, and if anything comes to you, just write it down. Even if it doesn't make sense, write the very first thing that you see, sense, feel, hear, know. These messages come to everyone in different ways. If nothing comes, don't worry. Just keep on holding that space of love in your heart for him. And then... I'm going to ask you to write down your messages that you received in the chat. Okay. Is everybody ready? So Janine, um, I just want to ask you um, if you, I have got my phone next to me. Um, so if there's any issues with the connection or with my voice or anything and you need to get hold of me, you can you can WhatsApp me. Or actually you can WhatsApp Simon because he's right next to me and he's um he won't be he'll be alert to the WhatsApp messages. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So once more, feel your feet firmly on the ground. Feel your body relax. On your in-breath, take your focus to your heart space. 
Be aware of that field of unconditional love for Mother Nature that has cleaned and cleared your heart and filled you up. Become aware of that beautiful connection that you have with Mother Nature and all her children. And now at this time, we are sending our love, our unconditional love and respect and understanding to the baboon known as Tony, whose picture is on the screen. We ask his permission to connect with him and to communicate with him. As we go into silence for five minutes, we ask that Tony share whatever he needs to and wants to share with us whether it is guidance for you as an individual, what you can do to help, or guidance for the collective. We're asking him to be the representative of his species at this time. We are asking him to share what we need to know at this time.
learning that ending your communication thank him for sharing thank him for being here if you need to you can go back to the space with him at any time all it takes is that connection of unconditional love and respect, asking permission and receiving confirmation of that. And that confirmation is a feeling, an energy. If the messages flow, then you know you have permission. If you just get stuck with a blank, you can try again another time. Okay. Just make sure you're very much um, back into your physical body, aware of your surroundings, aware of my voice, as you disconnect slightly from Tony. And I'd now in, I'd like to invite you to write in the chat anything that you received. If you would like to speak what you received, um, you can do that. While we're waiting um, for the messages to come through, I'm going to share my screen again. And just go to the next slide, which was the message that I received from him. One such clear message amongst a whole lot of other sort of instructions almost. We are the product of your fear. And if you just contemplate on what that means, you know, why have we dominated the world? This is a time of the Anthropocene where we are the head of the pyramid, which is not right. And how have we got there through the fear of not being good enough, of not having enough and needing more and more and more all the time. Okay, so I see there's a few messages come through here. Geraldine, see me, help me. I'm worried about you humans. You don't see what I see. I'm trying to tell you, open your hearts. Don't be blind. Stop encroaching. Be us. Thank you, Aldine. Tammy, Tony showed me a deep sense of sadness that they, the baboons, are feeling for humanity. A waste of energy is directed at the wrong level, picking up on the fear of humans and the destruction we are causing within ourselves sense of frustration the baboons are feeling. They are mirroring us to us, the destructive energies we are displaying, and they know no other way of bringing this to our attention. His message, in order to be appreciated and respected, in order to be loved, in order to be respected, you each need to love, respect, and appreciate your connectedness. We are trying to restore balance. Don't approach us with fear. Come back to your tribe. Lovely, Tammy. That's almost, that makes me feel quite teary. I felt that immense sadness as I was looking into his eyes, which I hadn't felt when he was being so angry. Okay, thank you. You will connect later. 
Feel free to email me as well after this um, or to write in the discussion section of the course if you've entered the, the Zoom meeting um, in the course and I will give you that link afterwards for the recording. But Deborah, thank you. You saw pictures of a mountain with a snow-covered peak. Um, saw sharks, sea turtle. He is representative for all animals. Messages for all to wake up and stop the killing. Thank you. Sophia, as guardian keepers, we baboons are breaking windows because we need you to wake up and need to be shaken up. Vortex energy and land coming from overseas. We need to keep respecting their guardianship and their mission. Thank you. Um, Tammy, I'm just going to read the others and then I can let you speak. Thank you. Patrice, um, you were shown an infant, a young baboon, felt the anger, the young baboons are ill, sick, weak. I heard, wake up, wake up, your children are, your own children are suffering. I heard, sense that their activity brings awareness. I also saw monkeys in other countries, India, Japan in particular, join together. Thank you. Thank you, Patrice. Um, Denise, raise your frequency because your low negative energy drives us crazy. Do not buy into the fear that is around. Wake up to the way even your thoughts impact on others. Don't see us as the enemy to be hunted. We are in this together. Wonderful. And Shelley, he tells me he's doing what we humans have done, showing us by his actions in his actions. Theft, violence, taking our sustenance. He is highlighting the hypocrisy of our treatment, of our management. It is control. It is for our sake, all for the sake of humans to feel safe. But it is a lie. Humans have broken the natural laws, replaced them with ones that do not reflect or respect nature. Natural laws, enough is enough. You humans are being ignorant. Man's laws do not support natural law. They are like poison and it's underground subconscious. It's time to bring this to light, to the light of day. Nature is divinity and being as nature expresses divinity. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Tanya. Tony is worried about us humans. He feels sad for humans not loving each other. How can we love animals? He shows me a rainbow connecting humans and mother nature. He tells me to educate our children. I felt deeply emotional. Tony has great sadness. I felt that too. Thank you. An initial wave of great sorrow. He wants to work with us, but doesn't see a way forward. My tears came overwhelming sorrow as he shared the loss and sorrow. He asked that we bring present. Be aware, don't waste. Feed, don't waste anything. Remember who we are. Be respectful of all life. Each has a role, the fabric of life. Remember all life is sacred. Thank you, Jaspreet. Saw him morph into a bare mountain of slate and his features started to look like industrial machines. And it was like he was showing me where we are all headed if we carry on heedlessly. Thank you, Jaspreet. Yoni, Leanne, you had a strong sense of the connection between Tony and yourself. So you still to need to appreciate the moment. Thank you, Leanne. Just carry on feeling that connection and it will come. Uh, Tammy, the most amazing thing happened as we were doing the connection with Tommy. A troop came into the property next to me and we we're sitting quietly just listening in. Oh, that is so beautiful, Tammy. Do you want to share that with us in words, in spoken word? Thank you. And so sorry, I'm just so, it was just so beautiful. It was just so amazing. I'm not going to switch my video on because I'm crying like a baby. Uh, <laughs> um, I live in Clets and for the most part, um, the people in this neighborhood have been very tolerant and it was quite incredible because literally as we started the connection i was slightly distracted for a moment because i could hear the freaking fog horns going and the crackers mm -hmm. going and um we've got a really huge massive alpha male and i've got an open piece of property that's next to me with palisade fence and my dogs obviously go ballistic and i do the normal i just bring them in it's okay guys come on let's go inside and i let them just pass through and I actually caught out of the corner of my eye, I looked to the left and they were just sitting there. There were about four of them, this huge, massive alpha male. And he was just sitting quietly and I could just sense that he felt the energy and he just felt the, 
the love that was coming from all of us mm -hmm. and it was just it was just so incredibly special and they've of, they've moved on very peacefully very quietly and the most incredible thing of all my dogs didn't even bark they just sat there and they just shared in the moment it was just thank you Winter. thank you uh, thank you for sharing that it's trying to sorry i'm blubbering like an absolute baby but it was just so beautiful <laughs> it was just yeah it's just um if we can just get everybody to you know and sometimes i think i think this applies to all of us you know we feel like sometimes we're losing a battle with the humans and mm. i think we've just got to radiate as much love as we can absolutely and, and you know sadness and tony was quite quite profound very very and I think, you know, it's so such a blessing when nature shows us that they're listening, nature's listening, you know, and she shows us physical signs of this. So, you know, just be observant yeah, of nature absolutely. when, and that's, that's to everyone. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. And so sorry, I'm going to mute myself again. Great. <laughs> thank you. And Sophie, you're saying, he keeps saying you can see through the darkness and we don't or can't. Yes. And I think he can transmute the darkness, just like the, the First Nations people believe. So um, he's important. They are all important. So thank you, everyone. What I, I'm going to share the screen once more. And um, I'm going to show you a few images of what could be. And... Um, then I'm going to guide you into a visualization of how we can create and manifest this energy that is needed, this shift, because there's very little that we can do as individuals, but on the, in the energetic field, in the universal field, we can create miracles because we, we are part of the universe and we are co-creators with God, with the higher forces with the animals, with Mother Nature, and we can choose to create positive or we can choose to create negative. So let us choose now to create some positive transformation. Winter, just sorry. Mm. Uh, yeah. Robert Bobby has a hand up. I think maybe. Oh, I didn't see that. Sorry. I haven't got the, the view on. Do you want to talk? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, my, my, my um, the, the, some of the buttons on our computer is not working, so I can't type, but I don't want to take up all your time. I can always write in later um, if, you, if you want to carry on, because um, I feel like I, the message will carry on. But it, it's the same sort of thing, an incredible, incredible grief from him. Mm. And, um, they, they're amazingly wise animals. I feel they have an incredible connection to the heart and they're very wide. They, he's a, you've got a very wide etheric and they're very peaceful, actually. Mm. Interesting, very, very peaceful animals. And so they have an amazing ability to um, negate sort of negativity around them and, and to kind of create harm. It, it's an interesting thing. I really felt that from him, but there's a lot of grief and they really have a need to be seen, to be acknowledged. And mm. I, I think he really wants us to sort of teach people or to kind of really inform people how loving they actually are. They're incredibly loving beings. Um, they and are. And you know, they're the, the least dangerous of all the big mammals <laughs> that you would do, wild mammals. They don't, no matter what happens to them, they do not hurt us. People have not been severely hurt. You know, they have not been attacked. You know, it's just incredible that they have been so... Um, tolerant, yeah. So, so somehow it's it's this need for humanity to acknowledge that or to actually understand that about mm. them. And now is the time. Mm. Now is the time. So I don't know what we can do to help them in that way. Okay, yeah. so now we're going to do um, I'm, I'm visualization. More. There's more to come, but I'll, I'll, I'll write you. Thanks so much. Okay, Thank thanks so much, Gabby. Thank you. Okay, uh, I'm just going to stop my video, so it's not a distraction. So just some images of these are the baboons over Komaki looking out over the houses very peacefully being up in the mountain. 
there's a young baboon eating proteas, which is part of the indigenous fainbos um, that grows naturally on the mountain. Here they are clambering in the bushes, in the fainbos bushes. Here's a baboon eating a, a bulb that they've dug up in the forest, in the indigenous forest. And here they are in the bushes, just eating their natural food, which is healthier for them than the human food. It is um, more nourishing, more medicinal in every way. Um, they self-medicate. And this is, I suppose, where we want them to be. And possibly when humans come across them, can we have this feeling together. So this was a picture taken probably in about 2008 with me and the one troop, um, the same troop that climbs up those um, brick walls that you saw, um, having some quiet time on the soccer field. Okay. So now I'm going to guide you into this positive visualization. Now this is the heart energy. This is the connection that we have with the universe. And the key is to visualize exactly what you want to happen or what Tony Braveheart wants from us. See it manifesting before your eyes and trust it and send it out to the universe as a prayer but not a desperate plea, a trusting, and so it is, and a beautiful offering to the universe to make this happen. And I do believe if enough people hold this vision, things will shift. And they are starting to, there are small patches of people that are making such a big difference um, to nature, to the for the baboons um, and all over the world for regeneration of forests and um, so that there is more green and less human destruction. And I don't know if you heard that, um, but that was a baboon bark in the dis distance. I'm wondering if um, just going to see the audio setting so you might be able to. No, I can't do this. Okay. Okay. So you might hear them barking in the distance. And that is Tony, definitely, his voice. So let us go back into that heart space. And we gaze upon the photograph of the elder baboon, Eric, who is now in spirit. And we ask for his guidance, for his family that are embodied in the form that he was embodied in. Feel that connection, that love you have for Mother Nature and for the baboons, the guardians of our lands, the shamans of the animal world. We see a world where people are more careful, careful where they take care and appreciate nature, they take care of nature, they become less consuming of nature, they start giving back by planting trees, leaving offerings of nutritional food for nature, 
whether it's in their compost garden or as a spiritual offering. See people going out to teach the children about nature, not only about the baboons, but all of precious nature that needs to be conserved at this time. As with the lions, if we protect the lions and look after the lions, all of nature is protected. If we protect the baboons and look after the baboons, all of their indigenous nature is protected. The forests go back to their indigeneity. The feinbos is restored. The places where the baboons and the monkeys forage for nutritious bulbs is vast once more. Further development in these pristine areas is stopped in its tracks. People start rather renovating and reusing existing buildings than building new. Farming methods, the monoculture farming methods are abandoned for permaculture methods. For combination farming in small areas Farmers work with the baboons, offering part of their crops instead of killing the troops. We see people interacting with the baboons, baboons without fear, with only love in their hearts, love and respect for nature, for them, as a co-species in this incredible world. They are our brothers. They are our sisters. They are family. We see Tony and his family relax and be provided for, trees planted, offerings given, him peacefully passing through the properties with no one being afraid, where he doesn't need to break into the houses to get access to nutritious food, where his family feels safe, where the babies feel safe. really see that vision, see the powers that be, the authority figures that order the killings, be taken away from their seats of power and let nature's law be appreciated and respected. see any blockages to the advocacy that Jenny and other baboon lovers are working so hard at working with government policies to change policy, to change the laws that killing is not the first option, is not any option. That humans start recognizing that they are the problem their consumer ways are the problem. They, I should say, we as humans are the problem. And let us give back, let us start giving back and appreciating and being more careful with what we buy, with what we do with our waste, what we eat, what we share, what we teach our children with heart, with love. See that vision, hold that vision. 
we ask the baboon elders Eric in spirit and we ask the lion ancestors to assist with this shift in transformation of the human heart for all of nature for the big wild animals and the little ones right down to the insects right down to the very soil the earth that we walk upon let us see the regeneration of our mother and so it is Just gently, let's take a minute or so just to gaze upon Eric, to give thanks for the presence of the baboons at this time, even if you are not in South Africa, wherever you are in the world, you have felt their energy, you have heard their message, you have heard their voice. Thank you everybody for that. Um, we were a little bit over the hour time allotted, but that visualization was very important. I encourage you to do that. And if you want to revisit the other heart um, gatherings that are recorded, you'll find them on the learn.animaltalkafrica.com site. And you, if you signed up for this webinar, you will have access to them. They are free. And Kay, thank you for your sharing as well. And Tammy, you heard it. Great. And you heard the baboons. Thank you. I'm so pleased that you heard, literally heard the voice of Tony barking down the valley. Um, and he hasn't been around for a, nearly a week. So it's amazing to hear him again. Okay, and also I encourage you to, um, if you, when you end, when we end this meeting, if you're in the Thinkific site, you will see that there are donation links. Um, Baboon Matters does amazing work all over the country. You can go to their site and see exactly um, what they do. There's also amazing tips if you are living in a baboon affected area. Um, Connie, the, um, the uh, whole thing is recorded. I can see if we can isolate that recording and I'll put it up um, for you, recording just the visualization. Uh, and um, the other thing is I've started a little bit of a fund. Uh, it was started actually by one of the Heart Pride members who offered um, some funds for Tony and um, his family in particular, where we can start. Um, I want to work with a project here called the Precious Tree Project, where we can start replanting, regenerating specifically for the baboons and perhaps look at doing some research in provisioning and offerings to see what um, can be an offering to him so that he doesn't have to come into the houses. Um, as well, of, of course, the education. You can see behind me, I've got a little bit of an altar and um, I created space for that baboon um, uh, statue um, to take prime space in the altar because especially when he started being um, becoming so aggressive um, and that really I felt helped him from stopping coming into our house um, I have to touch wood when I say that because the universe always tests when we think we've done something to prevent um, you know something uncomfortable then that will come again so 
Um, thank you, everybody. And thank you for your participation, for your support, for your vision. Um, and please keep connected. And I will look through your messages. Um, okay. All right, everybody. Thank you. I'm seeing your messages. Thank you so much, everyone. Blessings and blessings on you. And thank you, Janine, for holding the space as usual. And so I shall say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone.